long does it take until you actually start getting at least the basic concept state? Of the entire ship? Yeah. Well, I've been working on whole ships for about two years now, and there's still things that I'm learning. <laughs> so well, I'm, you I don't. feel I'm better every minute. Yeah. <laughs> you don't. I'm not a very quick learner when it comes to these sorts of things. I go down to the... Well, the thing so, is, it's just the You were actually teaching us last time we did this. Remember Dana's down on the dock over there? Yeah, right. Yeah. Curving. Um, got to the end of the three years, and I had the headphones wouldn't go channel wouldn't connect. Oh. And they took it in, in the day. Okay, so now make it coil. Clockwise in your hand. One, size, two, you two you have smaller hands? three. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Well, we're actually uh, ready to rock. Got our official dock hand catcher. Good job, all set. Just like on the dock lines, twisting your hips. Hit the tanker. Good job. Hey, that's about Wait, here we go. Yep, here he goes. Oh, oh. 
<laughs> Maybe the head and shoulders is running down. Maybe it's working. <laughs> Don't let me know. Let him know two's aboard. Two's aboard! Give him slack. There you go. <laughs> Watching. I would I would lower them over the side. Over the side, down the rail to to the water. Good job, Better to do one at a time. Good, good, good. Yeah, Number eight. Sweet. Filet. Sweet. Yeah. Which one's which? Good job. Keep your line on this side because this side would fall off, right? So right here. So you're going to actually load it. Yeah. You kind of palm it. Yeah. As you lower it down, make sure you're watching what you're doing. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, Repeat. One one zero a beam. Eight five a beam spirit. Roving Thunder coming through. Roving Thunder coming through. Ease number two. Ease two. Slock out a one and hold. Ease two. two. Dana, that's you. Ease you. What is help? Ease one. Slack out of three as it comes. Take up that slack in three. Take up slack in three, Marianne. Take up. Repeat back, then. Easing two. Easing two. One thing out. One thing out. Whatever you say, Dan and Marianne has to be sent to that guy right there. You have to hear. The guy in the gray hair. Okay. Hold one. Hold one. Wrap on three and hold. We're going to wrap on three and hold. Watch those fingers. Wrap around 
Slack out of two. It's three held. Three's held. Three's held. Slack in one. Slack in one. Slack out of one. Contact board. Hold one. Hold one. Contact board fenders. Contact aft fenders. Compression forward. One's held. Get a wrap on two. Get a wrap, get a wrap, get a wrap on, on two, two Dana. Slack out of all and belay. Good job, Dana. Okay. Pointers. It's okay to hold less in your hands for the sake of weight. A lighter weight is better. What you can do with the extra distance is lay it on the rail. Just take two coils, lay one next to another on the rail, and have a nice, comfortable weight in your arm. If you can't do this, it's probably too heavy. If you have to heft to do like a springy motion with your, from your elbows, it's probably too heavy. But if you know that you're going to need more distance, or you're capable of throwing more distance, just put that extra slack on the rail. And what happens when you get enough inertia with the momentum of your throw, it'll pull those coils off the rail in the, and into the water, and they'll send your, your throw a lot better. What's one? Second is as annoying as it might be to restow, you have when you're ready to throw, you have to commit. That you will you will miss over half of your throws if you hold that second hand back. When you see it not working, you're just like, ah! If you know if you hold that second hand, it will almost always fail. Okay, so when you throw, commit. It's like if you're like, I don't know if this is gonna work, man. You just let it both go and see what happens. It may take a little longer to restow, but your odds of making it are that much better because you're not holding back half of your distance in that hand. So yeah, it's sort of along the lines of what you said. Don't throw your line until you're ready. All right, you hear a pass two and you're like, oh, I got a pass two. It's going in the water. You're past two to go. Okay, like you say, take a breath, get set, get your balance, and then throw your line. Also, if you miss, sometimes. The person on the dock, if you just miss, can reach in and grab that line. So if you pull on your line right away, we lost that second chance. Third, uh, if you're not on a line or training, you need to stay off the port side of the boat. And fourth, uh, you really got to keep in, you got to keep looking back to the helm and see if you're in Doug's line of sight. Mm. And if you're in Doug's line of sight, you're in his way, and you got to duck down or move somewhere else. Hey, teacher, you guys know what you're doing. Awesome. If you have one off, yeah. then it slides off too easily. And if we are taking off another line and we start slipping back, it's going to start paying out. So we can take her up for the lab test right now. Take it back to the Miz. What do they call that? The box. <laughs> what do they call the box that they put the offenders into? The Lazarette. Lazarette. <laughs>
Dana need to put turns on or take slack? Turn on, Dana. Turn. Now. All the way around. There you go. Pass four. Pass four. Got a heavy on the dock for one. By the way, Dana. Down there reading. There is a way to get line one clear of all that gear forward. Okay, and if, instead of going up and over the stay, you go aft along the hull and then over the rail. The thing is, you got to make sure that tack line is tight. This line right here, this thick brown line, has to be tight so it's as out of the way as it can be. If it's slack, you're gonna you're gonna land your dock line right on it, and it's gonna miss. Okay, and what it does is. It gives you a more clear view of how far away from the dock you are, and when you throw it, you don't have all that stuff for it to get snagged on. It's just right over the rail and onto the dock. Okay, and it's just by going under everything and aft. Um, there's a way of whipping it. Your throw should really come from here and here, and less from your arms. Your arms are these cradles that are carrying the line that should be loosey-goosey. Okay, when you're throwing, you pivot your butt and your hips. The line should be back here. And when you move your shoulders and your legs around, your arms can just be fully extended. The only thing with any kind of tension in it is your hands holding onto the line as it comes around, and then you just let go of your hands. And the momentum that you generated by using your core and your shoulders will whip the line, will whip it. And that's the motion that's really gonna send it farther. If you try to throw it with your arms, mm -mm. Even I won't get very far.
that are that he puts me through. You're on a hard spot, and you're on a hard spot because we got to muscle this thing in. Muscle this in. I know you did that. Yeah. Muscle this in a second. Right. You got to make sure these last couple flakes get as tight as you can handle. I'm gonna come over here and help you for a moment, Casper. Four zero spirit. Once I get uh, moving under that lighter seam, you know where. Now here's when you can get angry. You can just start hitting that sail. Make sure it gets under that lighter seam. Okay. 